shout shift. Shift. Somebody shout shift. Yeah. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm overwhelmed. I'm in the spirit. I'm so overwhelmed. I've been like that all day. Just over. 
overwhelmed about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And like if he never does anything else, he's done so much for me. Yeah. There's a song that says, uh, you thought I was worth saving. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You know that song? Well, sing that song. Sing, sing. Say, go ahead and sing that song with me, Ellen. <laughs>
Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. But God demonstrates his love for us in that while, <laughs> while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, a lot of the times we think that we have to have it all together and we have to uh, uh, look a certain way and we have to have certain things. But Christ died for us before any of that can take place. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I don't know about anybody else, but there was a time after having lived a, a lawless, reckless life, I asked God, am I any value? Am I worth saving? In these days of narcissism and exaggerated self-esteem, many people seem to already view themselves as God's gift to the world. But in reality, we are not good in ourselves. Jesus said, no one is good except God alone. The Bible makes it clear there is no one who does good, Psalms 14 and 1. And even all of our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment. Fortunately, God is merciful. And in his love, deems us to be valuable. So I ask myself the question. I said, self, why is it that individuals have a hard time believing they are valuable to God? Could it be that a person believes they have done so much wrong that surely God must have made a mistake? That surely, because of the things that, I, that they've done, that there can be no redemption, no forgiveness, and no do-overs? This is the lie that the enemy would have you to believe. I know some of you have said, God, I know you said that you have the power to save me, to deliver me, and make me free. But where, oh where, is that power? Why am I trapped? Why am I bound while I struggle with this saying, where is your power? Or am I the only one who's ever asked that question? Mm -hmm. I know I'm in the house today. God said to remind my children that I have not forsaken them and I cannot leave them. That my hand is not so short that I cannot save and deliver them. He said to remind you that I love you with an everlasting love. He said to remind you that so, remind you that I love you so much that I gave my only begotten son. And if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, you will not perish. If you believe that thing that you caught up in, if you believe that thing that's got a hold of you, if you believe that situation, if you believe that job, if you believe that relationship, if you Might ask, 
There are two things that I came up with that determine a value in one's life. It depends, number one, it depends on what someone is willing to pay for it. How much is your house worth? Not as much as you think it is, and probably not as much as it was worth a year ago, right? Your house is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. I know somebody probably would say, well, well, no, sometimes you pay, people pay for things and it's worth more than that. Well, it was worth that for that person who bought it, right? right. So y'all walk with me here. So whatever someone is willing to pay for it. Number two, it depends on who owned it in the past. For instance, if, uh, if, you, if Elvis Presley lived in a house, if you lived in a house, probably Elvis Presley house would go for more. If you had a pair of shoes to sell, and then we had a shoe, pair of shoes that Michael Jordan wore, his probably would go for more at the auction, right? So you walk with me here. If uh, if you had a guitar, and John Lennon had a guitar, his guitar probably would sell for more. So it depends on who owned it in the past. Based on these two things, what's your value? Ask yourself, who owns me? What was paid for me? The Bible says that you've been bought and paid for by Christ, so you belong to him. Be free now from all these earthly prides and fears. So earthly prides and fears. And I thought about that. Earthly prides and fears. Fear of not good enough. Fear of less than. Fear of being unsuccessful. Fear of not being liked. Fear of being rejected. Earthly fears. God said that we're free from those things because of what he did on the cross. We're now free of those things. Now ask yourself, who do I belong to? The Bible says you belong to God. God exchanged his own son for you. The cross proves your value. Jesus didn't die for no junk. You are worth saving. Okay, so now we verify that you're worth saving and that you're valuable to God. Then comes the question, is God able? I know you say, he did it for them, but will he do it for me? He can, and if he can, why or oh why does it seem so incredibly hard in my life? For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me, Psalms 51 and 8. God never promised that it would be easy. But the word tells us that he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. The word also says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than the gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1 and 7. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Think it not strange that you're going through these fiery trials as if something strange were happening to you. The word says, Behold, I have refined you, but not with silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Isaiah 48 and 10. I have surely heard Ephraim read, You have chastised me, and I was chastised. Like an untrained cow, bring me back that I may be restored. For you are the Lord my God. Jeremiah 31 and 18. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Psalm 119 and 67. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So as I was as I was studying this, I, there was a, so what I what I hope you heard is that you're worth saving. I, I wanted I, I invited my daughters here. I watch young women as they struggle, going from day to day to day to day. The twenty something. There's this there's this age group of twenty something to thirty middle mid thirties, and I, I watch them struggle. This is God has given me an iPhone. I watch them really struggle. Sometimes they get lost. In the church, you know, you have the young kids, you have the babies, and then you have the ones who are seasoned. And sometimes there's an age group that, that, that gets lost in the church. And I watch these young women as they, and men as they try to figure out the meaning of life. 
And I know, I know for the ones who have been in it for a while, you give it to God and he'll do it and we get that. But I also believe that God honors the process. And sometimes you have to go through some things and there's some things that God has to do in your life before you get to that safe, sanctified place. I'm just saying. And sometimes we tend to forget the process that a person has to go through. We don't honor the process. God honored the process because in six days he created the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested. So those six days was what? A process, right? So sometimes we have to honor the process. And I'm asking, so the conclusion of the matter is, is that God thought that you were worth it. He thought you were worth saving. And I don't care what your life may look like now. I don't care what you're going through. And I'm saying this because somebody needs to be encouraged today. Um, you know, on a, on, a, on a good day, I'd like to shout y'all crazy, but you know, my gifts are being perfected. But I just believe that God sent the word to encourage you and to encourage you today. That I don't care what your life may look like. It doesn't matter what the enemy says to you. Yeah. It doesn't even matter the situation that you're in right now. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Because God said that I have plans for you. Yeah. And all you have to do is believe. And all you have to do is hold on. And don't give up. Because sometimes we give up too soon because we don't think that God is there. Yeah. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. Yeah. Now check this out. I love the scripture. Because the weapon may form. You won't see it. You won't be looking at it. It's going to be operating right in front of you. But, but the nugget in the scripture, the Bible says that it won't prosper against you. That, that, that no matter what situation you're in, no matter what you're going through, that it's not going to prosper. You see the enemy. Thank you, you see, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. If he can kill your hope, if he can steal your peace and destroy your praise, he thinks he's won. How many of you know that it's a fixed fight? And I win. You
God said that you're back. 